Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over how do you write the balanced equation when you're only given like the equation in words and when you're given a description of the reaction what do you do? So in this video I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So let's get into this. All right so um, here we're going to write the balanced equations from each of these uh, situations. So in the first one, we're told uh, we have the complete combustion of benzoic acid and they give us the formula. So uh, what is complete combustion? Complete combustion is where you are burning the substance in the presence of oxygen and the only products you're being are, that are being formed is carbon dioxide and water. That is key to understanding this particular situation. So whenever you run across complete combustion, the products, the only products formed are going to be uh, carbon dioxide and water. If your compound only has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it, right? So like this one here, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We don't have nitrogen. We don't have sulfur. So we don't have to worry about nitrogen dioxide or sulfur dioxide forming. So here, uh, whenever you're given some sort of hydrocarbon, something that has carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and they say it's a complete combustion, the only two products that are forming are carbon dioxide and water. So once we have that out of the way, we can write our skeletal structure for the equation. So here, our reactants are going to be uh, benzoic acid. They give us the formula. So it's going to be C6H5. COOH. And uh, in combustion, the reaction is in oxygen. So oxygen is always a reactant in combustion. So that's our other reactant. And the thing you need to always remember is oxygen is one of those diatomic molecules, the diatomic elements, excuse me, uh, which is also uh, an, a molecule. So we need to write down O2, not O, but O2. And there also, it's important to keep in mind that uh, writing the, um, the uh, states of matter is important too. So if they give you the state of matter, then write that down as well. So we know this is a gas. So we'll write G for gas. Uh, this is uh, benzoic acid combustion. Um, so we'll, we don't know what that is. Could be a solid. Um, uh, so probably, probably is a solid. So if we write that as a solid. Um, and so that's going to react. And again, the only products is carbon dioxide and water. CO2, and that's a gas, plus water. And a lot of times we'll write the water as gas because we're burning um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to be forming a liquid water out of when you're burning something. Um, but, it, you know, some some uh, books will write L for liquid. Some will say gas. I prefer gas, but um, it doesn't tell us in the problem. So now we have our skeletal structure. So all we need to do is balance the equation. So remember, rule of thumb when you're balancing the equations is if you have a pure substance in your equation that uh, like a pure element that is not combined in any sort of way with a product, then leave that to last. So here is an example. We have oxygen gas. It's an, a pure element by itself. So we're going to leave that to last. Um, and we're going to balance everything else. So usually you're going to start with uh, the metals, right? You would balance metals first. We don't have metals in here. Um, and then you would go to the non-metals. You would balance all of the non-metals uh, that are except for hydrogen and oxygen. And normally you would leave oxygen last or hydrogen depending. Um, but normally you would balance uh, everything else except for hydrogen and oxygen and then balance hydrogen first and then oxygen. Um, but here, since we have oxygen as a pure element, we're going to leave that to last. Okay, so <clears throat> we have six carbons on this side. We have only one. So when you have your proper formulas, 
when you're balancing your equation, you never uh, change subscripts. Keep the subscripts the way they are because if you change the subscripts, you're changing the product or reactant. You're changing the substance itself. We don't want to do that when we're balancing the equation. So we're only going to add and change uh, coefficients. So we need a six coefficient here to give us our six carbons. So six times one gives us six carbons. One times six gives us six carbons. So our carbons are balanced. Um, oh, I made a mistake. So I forgot about this carbon here. So I have six plus one. That's seven carbons. Easy to correct. So instead of six, we'll need a seven here. So seven carbons. So some of you are probably out there screaming, no, it's seven. I got it. Thank you. I heard you. Uh, okay. So here we have seven carbons. Here we have seven carbons. Excellent. Uh, next, the only thing we have left is oxygen. Hydrogen. We'll do hydrogen first. We have five hydrogens here. We have one. So that's going to be six total hydrogens here. We have two hydrogens here. So what times two gives us six? So coefficient of three. So we'll have a, a coefficient of three. Three times two gives us six. And then that matches up with the six hydrogens we have here. Okay, so far so good. Now we have oxygen. So the total oxygen on this side so far is two here and two there. That's four. And the total on this side is going to be uh, seven times two gives us 14. And three times one gives us three. So if you add that together, you get 17. So we have 17 oxygens on this side. We need a total of 17 on this side. So what we can do is we can manipulate the coefficient here. Now, we know we have two on this side, right? So we don't want to change that. We're not going to change this molecule. So we're going to subtract those two from the 17. So that would be 15. So we need 15 from this guy right here. So what times two is going to give us 15? Right? Because if we got 15 here, then we just add the 2 and we got our 17. So we're going to focus on this guy right here. So we want 15 from this guy. So what times 2 gives us 15? You got it. 7.5. So we have 7 and a half. So 7.5 times 2 gives us 15. So now our equation is balanced. And you're probably wondering, wait, Mr. Cobalt, we can't keep that there. That's a 7.5. We can't have fractions. You're right. So since we have a half there, we need to get rid of it by multiplying by 2. So we're going to multiply our whole equation by 2 to get rid of that fraction. So 1 times 2 is 2. So there's our 2 there. 7.5 times 2 is 15, so we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to put 15 there. 7 times 2 is 14, so we're going to put 14 there. And 3 times 2 gives us 6, so we're going to put 6 there. And now we have our completely balanced equation. Okay, so what about this one? So here we're told it's a composition reaction by heating. So we're going to start with solid mercury to nitrate. So you, you have to know how to go from the formula to the, uh, from the name to the formula and from the formula to the name. So here it's really important to have the naming down and be able to go from the name of the formula to the formula itself. So if you can't remember that, please go to my other videos where I cover uh, uh, naming uh, chemical formulas and going from the formula to the name and name to the formula. Okay, so in composition, uh, we, we have this solid mercury to nitrate. So we want mercury to nitrate. Mercury to nitrate is going to be 
Hg. Mercury 2 is where you have, let's see, Hg, and you have a positive 2 charge on the mercury. You have nitrate, and so you're going to have NO2, or excuse me, NO3 minus, and you're going to have two of those there so you've got that and that's going to produce mercury liquid mercury nitrogen dioxide gas and oxygen gas okay so one of the things we need to keep in mind here is that we're we're decomposing this by heating so when you put your arrow uh, a lot of times you'll put a triangle there triangle means heat so you're adding heat when you add heat to this, then you get these three things. You get mercury. Oh, I should put a S here for solid. So S in parentheses for solid because it says we have solid mercury to nitrate. And then we have mercury liquid. So we're producing that plus nitrogen dioxide. That's going to be NO2 and that's a gas. And then we have oxygen gas. And again, remember, O2 is a diatomic element. So it's a molecular element. And so we're going to have O2 gas. Okay. So now we have our skeletal structure here, our skeletal uh, equation here. So now we can balance the equation. So again, you're going to start with metals first, balance the metals first. So uh, mercury, we have one mercury here, we have one mercury here. So that's balanced. Um, that's the only metal we have. So let's move to the nonmetals. We're going to balance all of the nonmetals and we're going to leave uh, night. We're going to leave oxygen and hydrogen to last. We don't have hydrogen here, so it's uh, oxygen is going to be last. So that means we're going to balance nitrogen. So here we have two subscripts and we have one nitrogen in the parentheses. So two times one gives us two. So we have two nitrogens here. We only have one nitrogen here. So we're going to have to put a two coefficient. So two times one gives us two. So now our nitrogen is balanced. Last but not least is your oxygen. So notice we have oxygen by itself. So it's, it's, uh, it's convenient. And appropriate to leave that to last. So let's check this out. So we have two times three oxygen gives us six oxygen on this side. We have two times two gives us four oxygen plus the two oxygen here. It's six, so it's already balanced. We don't have to do anything. So we have a balanced equation. That was easy. All right, what about the next one? C. Copper metal reacts with gaseous oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water to form green basic copper carbonate. And they give us the formula. This is the reaction that occurs when your bronze statues are turning green. So that green patina on your uh, bronze statue is due to this reaction here. So the copper carbonate, basic carbon, copper carbonate is the causing the green color. All right, so what is this reaction? So let's write this out. We have copper metal reacts with gaseous oxygen. So what kind of reaction do you have when you have uh, something reacting with oxygen? Combustion. So this is a combustion reaction uh, because you're reacting something with oxygen. Oxygen is one of our reactants, so that's a combustion reaction. So we have copper metal. So we're going to have to write Cu for copper, and it's a metal, so that's solid, plus, uh, ga uh, plus gaseous oxygen because it's reacting with gaseous oxygen. And again, oxygen is a diatomic element, so it's O2 and G for gas. And it tells us that our products are... Carbon dioxide. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I forgot my other reactants. So oxygen. So it's not quite a combustion reaction, but it is combustion is sort of involved. So we have oxygen plus carbon dioxide, which is a gas. 
and water H2O and we'll write that as a liquid okay so there's our reactants and our one product is the copper basic copper carbonate Cu2OH2CO2 so there's our substance and this will be a solid all right so now we have our skeletal structure for the equation and now we need to balance it so again metals first so we have one copper here we have two coppers here so we need a two coefficient here to balance the coppers so that's balanced uh that's the only metal we have so now it's non-metals and we're going to balance all the non-metals except for oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, we don't have, we do have oxygen by itself, so we should leave that to last. So we're going to balance everything uh, first, leave hydrogen, oxygen, and then balance hydrogen. So we have carbon here. So we have one carbon and we have one carbon. So that's balanced. We don't need to do anything. Uh, then we have hydrogen oxygen left, so we're going to balance hydrogen first. So we have two hydrogen here, and we have one times two hydrogen there, so that's balanced. Okay, so now we only have oxygen to deal with. So we have two oxygen here and two oxygen here, so that gives us four oxygen on this side. Oh, I forgot this one. We have one oxygen there in the water. So that's going to be a five. So we have five oxygen on this side. And so let's count the oxygen on this side. We have two, one times two is uh, two oxygen. And we have two oxygen here. So that's four oxygen. So we have four oxygen on this side, but we have five oxygen on this side so we need to get rid of an oxygen here okay so uh easy way to do this is if we could cut this in half and get rid of one of the oxygens then that would give us four oxygens so why not just do that so we'll have a half of an oxygen so one half times two gives us one so we got one oxygen from here, two oxygens from here, and one from there. That will give us our four oxygens. And now it's balanced. However, we can't keep the, the fraction. So the best way to get rid of the fraction by uh, without unbalancing the equation is to multiply everything by two. So to get rid of this fraction, we need to multiply by two but we're going to multiply the whole equation by 2 to keep our equation balanced. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 half is 1. And then 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. And then 2 times 1 is 2. And you can double check to see if it's balanced, but if you did everything correctly, then it should be balanced. So this would be the balanced equation for this reaction. And then finally, the last one, we have calcium dihydrogen phosphate. Reacts with sodium hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate. Hydrogen carbonate and bicarbonate are the same names for the same thing. So it means the same thing. And you're producing what? You produce tricalcium phosphate. Uh, calcium phosphate and tricalcium phosphate are the same thing. So sometimes you call it tricalcium phosphate. Um, and you're form forming sodium hydrogen phosphate or disodium hydrogen phosphate. Again, sometimes you'll see it with the di. Normally for ionic, ionic substances, we don't use the Greek prefixes, but you will find it with the di sometimes. So be aware of that. And then you have carbon dioxide and water formed as well. So let's write out what these formulas are. So calcium dihydrogen phosphate. So that's going to be dihydrogen phosphate is your H2 
uh, PO4 three minus, or actually uh, PO4 uh, minus. So calcium has a two plus charge. So you're gonna need two of these to balance the charge. So we're gonna have Ca parentheses, and you're gonna have dihydrogen. So you have two hydrogens, H2, PO4, and you're gonna need two of those to balance the charge. And that's going to react with plus sodium hydrogen uh, carbonate or bicarbonate. So that's going to be, you have your sodium Na and your hydrogen carbonate is HCO3. And it's a one-to-one. -one. <clears throat> and that's going to produce what? your tricalcium phosphate or just calcium phosphate. So for calcium phosphate, the formula is Ca3 and then PO4, 2. You can see why they say tricalcium. But again, we don't usually use Greek prefixes in our uh, ionic uh, substances, in the names of our ionic substances. Okay, so we have calcium three uh, calcium uh, phosphate here. Uh, the next thing producing uh, calcium phosphate, sodium hydrogen phosphate. So plus sodium uh, hydrogen phosphate. So hydrogen phosphate is HPO4 with two minus. So we're gonna need two sodiums to go with our HPO4. Okay, so that's your hydrogen phosphate. And then we got carbon dioxide and water. So plus CO2 plus H2O. So there's our skeletal structure for our equation. We've got all our formulas correct. So all we need to do is now figure out what the coefficients we need are. We're not going to change any of the subscripts. So balance the metals first. So we have calcium, so Ca, we have one here, three here. So we're gonna put a three coefficient here. Three times one is three. One times three is three. Okay, uh, next is sodium. Sodium is a metal. So we have one sodium here. We have two sodiums here. So we need two here. So we're gonna put a two coefficient. So two times one is two and one times two is two. Okay, so now our calcium and our sodium are balanced. So at this point, we're going to uh, balance everything uh, except for hydrogen and oxygen. So we have phosphorus. So we have two times one phosphates or phosphoruses here. We have two times four phosphorus is here so that oh i'm sorry two times one so that's going to be two there and we have one here so that's going to be three three phosphoruses so three on this side so one there two times one there so that's two so we have three and we have uh, three there, but uh, we forgot the three here. So two times one is two. So we have two, and then so we have then two times three is six. We have six phosphate phosphorus is here, and we have three on this side. So let's double check. So two times one, we don't have a coefficient there. So that's going to be two. Uh, plus the one. So we have three there. Okay, so what do we do for that? Um, that's going to be, uh, let's see. So we need three more on this side. So then what we could do is we could change one of these so we could put a phosphorus here 
and we could change this to uh so we have two here one there we could put a four here so that would give us four phosphoruses plus the two that would be six so then we have to go over here and change this so we have four times two is eight so that means we're going to have to have a coefficient eight here to balance that out so now our sodiums are still balanced eight times one is eight four times two is eight and so now we have two times three is six six phosphoruses two times one is two plus four times one is four that's going to be six so that's that's now balanced so we have our phosphorus balanced okay so what's next uh carbon so we have carbon here so we have eight times one carbon so that's eight total carbons on this side none over here so eight here and so how many carbons do we have over here we have one carbon in our carbon dioxide we don't have carbon anywhere else so we're gonna have to put an eight here so let's erase that so we're gonna put an eight there so now we have eight carbons uh on both sides and we haven't changed anything else so that's good so so far everything is balanced and what we have left is hydrogen and oxygen so uh we'll, we'll balance hydrogen first and then oxygen so let's look at our hydrogen so here we have two hydrogens uh but we also have two here so two times two is four hydrogens and then we need to multiply by three the coefficient so that's going to be four times three is 12. so we have 12 here 12 hydrogens from this compound we have hydrogen here so eight times one is eight so we have eight there so this gives us a total of 20 hydrogens on this side so eight plus 12. now what about over here so here we don't have any hydrogens. We have a hydrogen here, right? So we have uh, four times one gives us four hydrogens. So we have four hydrogens here, right? No hydrogens here, and we have two hydrogens there. So we need we want twenty. We have four. We need sixteen left. So we have two there. So what times two gives us 16? Eight, right? So we just need to put an eight in front of our water. So eight times two gives us 16 plus the four here gives us 20. So now we got our hydrogens balanced. So now the only thing left is oxygen. So let's take a look at our oxygen. Let me go ahead and erase these here and so now last but not least is our oxygen so we have four oxygens here times two so that's eight and eight times three is what that's going to be 24 so we have 24 oxygens here okay and now uh, how many oxygens do we have here? So we have three oxygens here and we have eight. So eight times three gives us again, 24. So we have 24 oxygens here. So we have a total of 48. Okay, so plus equals 48. Let, let's look at this side here. So we have two times four gives us eight so we have eight oxygens there we have four oxygens here four and we have four coefficients so four times four gives us 16. here we have eight times two gives us 16. and here we have eight times one gives us eight so 
eight and eight.